After nearly a week of radio silence since testing the water deluge systems, yesterday SpaceX conducted an important test to gauge the Super Heavy Booster 9's pumps and turbines. Well, this will be the opening for a series of tests before its static fire test and eventual launch. Preparing for the next Starship flight. This time, I think we have around 50% probability of reaching orbital velocity. However, even getting to stage separation would be a win, Elon Musk declared after the test. The test started at roughly 10.13 a.m. local time after Starship's super heavy booster had started venting out its propellants earlier. It lasted for roughly 12 seconds and saw plumes of cold propellant surging from the bottom of the rocket as it appeared that SpaceX had tested several engines on its rockets to ensure that their performance would be up to the mark when it comes time for the second Starship orbital test flight. This test, called a spin prime test, sees the rocket gush super cool propellants from its engines as they are pumped out without ignition. The previous Starship booster, which was destroyed during flight back on April 20th, also ran a similar test and it came with some fireworks that saw a large fireball light up at its bottom. However, SpaceX has learned from experience this time, and during this test, FireX, composed of water and nitrogen, is first triggered to disperse gases and prevent any unintended ignitions, much like the one that occurred during the Booster 7 Spin Prime test. Booster 9 completed a flight-like chill and spin of the Raptor engine pumps in advance of static fire, SpaceX shared on X.com. SpaceX teams will now analyze data from the test and move forward with the first firing of engines on the launch pad since the integrated test flight in April of 2023. The static fire test could come as soon as next week. Upgrades to the Raptor engines are one of the most important on the Starship vehicle after the first flight attempt in April. While most attention during the test was focused on the world's largest rocket doing cartwheels in the air, Starship's engines continued to turn off as it ascended after liftoff. The engine which powers the rocket, SpaceX's Raptor version 2, is a big upgrade over the Merlin engines that power the Falcon 9 regarding its thrust, fuel efficiency, and cleaning capability. And no, don't expect it to be in a made outfit when I'm speaking of the cleaning capability, or at least I think you shouldn't. Anyways, while the Merlin engines use kerosene, or RP-1, which causes carbon buildup inside the engines, the Raptor's fuel of choice, methane, is a clean burn that leads to easier to maintain engines. This maintenance is crucial since SpaceX has big plans for Starship that involves dozens of launches to fill up orbital fuel depots and conduct other missions. Another crucial upgrade, and perhaps the most important, is the hot staging ring that SpaceX will add to the top of the Super Heavy booster. This piece is important since it will protect the top of the Super Heavy Booster from the exhaust plume and forces from the second stage engines as they light up for stage separation. The upgrade is crucial since the second Starship test flight will see the second stage spacecraft's engines fire up to jettison away from the booster after SpaceX's earlier stage separation design failed during the April launch. The first test article for the hot staging appears to be in the final stages of development. Whether SpaceX discards it or builds a new one is unknown, but the firm should test it for compression strength to ensure that it can bear the forces of a rocket pushing on it from both the top and the bottom. In the end, all of this is impressive. It seems just like yesterday. It was April 20th, and we were on the edge of our seats, or on the tips of our toes in anticipation, of the first IFT from SpaceX's Starship. Here's hoping for a launch by mid-August. However, before Starship can even hope to launch, SpaceX has to go through everything that happened during the April launch with the FAA to ensure all systems are ready to launch the world's largest rocket once again. But don't worry about all that and hold Hold on to your seats, because the cosmos just got a whole lot closer. NASA has selected Axiom Space to carry out the fourth in a series of private astronaut missions to the interstellar
International Space Station aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule. The launch window is set for sometime in August of 2024. The four-person crew, handpicked for their pioneering spirit, will be living the dream, spending up to two incredible weeks docked at the ISS. But don't be mistaken, for this isn't the first time NASA and Axiom have joined forces. The AX-1 mission made waves when it visited the space station in April of 2022, swiftly followed by AX-2's captivating journey in May of 2023. NASA then made an impressive move, selecting Axiom for the equally thrilling AX-3 mission back in March. But the real buzz was about the mysterious fourth mission as NASA tantalizingly hinted at negotiations with an undisclosed company. The initially planned launch date of AX-3 for November of 2023 has been pushed back quite a bit, making room for even greater scientific collaboration. So, who will be the chosen few to embark on these mesmerizing missions? While the NASA rulebook requires former astronauts to captain these voyages, three golden seats remain open for space enthusiasts eager to experience the extraordinary. Axiom's CEO Michael Sufredini hinted at government-sponsored astronauts taking up these seats, sparking anticipation for an out-of-this-world lineup. Axiom isn't just in it for the thrill. These missions are building blocks for their larger plans. Drawing from these experiences, Axiom aims to construct its own commercial modules on the ISS by late 2025. These modules will eventually lay the foundation for an independent space station, ready to stand tall when the ISS eventually retires. In the words of Sufredini himself, these missions are instrumental in expanding commercial space activities and access to space for individuals and nations around the world. This partnership embodies the spirit of progress, and it's not just about exploration. It's about normalizing life and work in microgravity. It's not just NASA's journey. It's a shared endeavor. The private astronaut missions signal a turning point in NASA's transition strategy, paving the way for a new era of commercial space stations beyond the ISS. Phil McAllister, director of commercial space at NASA headquarters, aptly described this as another milestone in our efforts to transition low Earth orbit from primarily a government-sponsored activity to one where NASA is one of many customers. Safety has been paramount throughout this journey, with NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, or ASAP, providing their expert insights. Mark Sarangelo, a panel member, highlighted the success of AX-2's mission, praising the remarkable progress these private astronaut missions have made. And for our last segment, using a long-shot shout maneuver, the Voyager mission team at NASA has re-established communication with Voyager 2 after losing losing contact with the spacecraft which has been operating for nearly 46 years. At 12.29 a.m. EDT on August 4th, the spacecraft began returning science and telemetry data, indicating it is operating normally and that it remains on its expected trajectory, according to an update shared by the space agency. Commands sent to Voyager 2 on July 21st accidentally caused the spacecraft's antenna to point two degrees away from Earth. This minuscule shift meant that Voyager 2 couldn't receive any commands from Mission Control or send data back to Earth from its location more than 19.9 billion kilometers away in interstellar space. Earlier this week, the mission team was pleasantly surprised to be able to detect the heartbeat of Voyager 2, or the spacecraft's carrier signals using the Deep Space Network, which is an international array of massive radio antennas that allows NASA to communicate with missions across the cosmos. Each of the three giant dishes are equidistant, meaning that one is always in communication with different spacecraft as our planet rotates. One radio antenna is located at Goldstone near Barstow, California, the second near Madrid, Spain, and the third near Canberra, Australia. After de 
detecting the heartbeat, the team used the station in Canberra to send an interstellar shout, which is essentially an amplified radio signal, to Voyager 2, with commands instructing the spacecraft to reorient its antenna to face Earth. Given the massive distance between Earth and Voyager 2, the team thought there was a low probability that the command would work, given that the antenna wasn't oriented in a way to receive a radio signal, said Suzanne Dodd, Voyager's project manager at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. It takes about 18 and a half hours for the signal to travel one way across the solar system to the spacecraft. Overall, it took 37 hours for mission controllers to learn that the shout worked. And that, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between wraps up our show for today. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.